video, we'll be going over uh, depreciation for both residential and non-residential uh, rental or real property. So uh, I've been asked probably the biggest question about depreciation has to do with how to depreciate residential real property once you've placed it in a service. So we'll address that. I looked up examples in IRS publication 946, uh, which covers depreciation and amortization. Uh, the closest that that example has is using the straight line method, mid-month convention for uh, non-residential real property with a recovery period of 39 years. Residential real estate being uh, a recovery period of 27 and a half years. So if it's all right with you, we're first going to go over the example as it's laid out in the form instructions for non-residential real property. And then we'll kind of walk through the math of that so that you can understand how the uh, conventions are calculated. Then we're going to go over how to apply that with residential real property that has a slightly different recovery period. So uh, both of these, whether it's residential real property or non-residential real property, uh, it is uh, straight line depreciation with a mid-month convention. So if you don't understand those, uh, you that's the first thing. So the straight line method basically means uh, you take a straight line and over the recovery period, you just take the same amount of depreciation every year. However, you do need to make an adjustment for the first year uh, with depending on the month that you placed it into service. That is known as, in for this purpose, mid-month convention means that if you placed an asset into service in January, let's say January of 2023, then you can benefit from depreciation through the entire year of 2023 as if you put it into service on January 15th, regardless of the date you actually placed it into service. It doesn't matter if you put it into service January 1st or if you put it into service January 31st. So if it was June, then your mid-month convention would be, you know, starting in June. That first year of depreciation is probably the trickiest calculation because after that, subsequent years are kind of just averaged together over the remaining recovery period uh, using a straight line depreciation method. So we're going to walk through the 39-year example just so that you can understand the calculations. And then I'll show you kind of a, a cheat sheet, if you will, for how to apply this to uh, residential real estate. So let's go back and kind of focus on some of the key points of the example in IRS publication 946. Um, I'm going to switch pages one more time because this is a little bit easier to, to understand. So the, it's the same publication. It's simply the PDF version instead of the uh, web page version. So I'll zoom in on this. So an example two, uh, this is a building that you pl uh, placed into service in January, we'll say January of 2023, and it costs $100,000, that's your basis. Of course, it's a recovery period of 39 years because it's non-residential real estate, and we're going to use straight line method, mid-month convention. So this first year, uh, we're going to, uh, first calculate the, calculate the straight line depreciation rate, and then we're going to determine the mid-month uh, convention. Instead of just reading these notes, I've actually put together a PowerPoint that will help walk through that calculation. Okay, so the fir first thing we need to do is calculate straight line depreciation over a 39-year uh, recovery period. So in this case, one divided by 39, and we get uh, 0 0.02564. So we multiply that by the $100,000 basis, and over 39 years, 
we would be able to take $2,564 each year uh, for 39 years. Uh, however, we do have to account for that uh, first year of depreciation with the mid-month convention. So what that means is that first year we're going to uh, we're going to make a calculation on what we'll take in that first year, and then we'll still get our 39 years of depreciation, uh, but we're going to have to make an adjustment. So the adjustment for the first year is that instead of taking the full 12 months of depreciation, we're going to take 11 and a half months. So we need to, so we're going to take a number that's less than this. We're going to take the 11.5 uh, divided by a full calendar year, and we get a, a decimal, ze uh, not, sorry, 0 0.958. We now multiply that by the uh, straight line depreciation rate of, uh, 2564 and we come up with 0 0.02456 so our first year depreciation because we took this in January is going to be 2456 not quite the full 2564 but that's what it is so uh, that is what is reflected I believe right here where we place this asset in a service uh, January 2023, the basis over a 39 year, 2456, right? And then we would complete the rest of form uh, 4562 with all of the other uh, property that we may need to depreciate. So for second year, what we would need to do, according to the instructions, it, or the publication example, is that we're going to have to back out the first year of depreciation, we'll calculate the remaining uh, period, and then we're gonna calculate the straight line method uh, based on that remaining period. So the first year of depreciation, uh, we're gonna back out the 2456 from the original 100,000, and we come up with 97,544. Uh, we're going to calculate the remaining period by adding that half month from 2023 to the remaining 38 years. So we divide that into 12 months, we get uh, 0.042 years. We'll tack that on. And now we're going to calculate the straight line method based on that. So we get one divided by 38.042, which gives us a decimal of 0.0269. We're going to multiply that by the nude uh, basis the 97,544, we get a depreciation of 2,564. So in year two, that's what this would look like. And the instructions basically say you need to keep going on and on and on, uh, making that adjustment every year. But realistically, once you get past that first recovery year, uh, everything is a straight line. This what should be what your depreciation looks like from here on out. So what if this were residential real estate? How would this look? Well, we're not going to do depreciation calculations for 27.5 year property the way we did here because uh, it turns out there's a different IRS publication, publication 527, that just gives us the table. So if you go to uh, IRS Publication 527, there are a series of optional uh, percentage tables that you can use. And Table 2-2D is the one that presides over residential rental property. Uh, again, 27 and a half year uh, straight line depreciation with the mid-month convention. And fortunately, we've got all the numbers right here. So if we took that original $100,000 and now we're taking the first year depreciation of, uh, let's say, point zero point zero three four eight five, then that is what our, uh, that is what our uh, depreciation would look like up here. Okay, that's, 
That's for the first year. And then after that, turns out every other year, no matter what month you placed it into service, uh, uh, the decimal is 0 0.0336. So again, we go back to that uh, form uh, 4562. And for subsequent years, we would simply do that. Okay. Now this example is uh, pretty simplistic because we're using a hundred thousand dollars. Don't get complacent. If your basis is actually $500,000, then you would need to take that decimal and you would need to uh, make the appropriate calculation. So don't just put three, six, three, six in there because it's easy to remember. That's the decimal that you would need to multiply by your remaining basis. So, um, so this was based on, so that's all I have for this video on how to calculate depreciation for your uh, residential real estate uh, that you placed into service, either first year or subsequent years. And this was a video that I put together based on a uh, request from several readers uh, that wanted to know how to depreciate their uh, residential rental real estate uh, that they placed into service. So we'll put links in the show notes to relevant uh, articles and videos that uh, specifically on uh, IRS form 4562, if you'd like to see uh, a little bit more uh, about how to complete the form itself. So if you do, um, it also contains an article which we can walk through step by step some of this, uh, so, some of these calculations. So uh, if you like our articles, uh, please subscribe to our newsletter. Easiest way to do that is go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. You can do one of two things. One, you can type in the name of a IRS form that you're looking for in the search bar. Odds are likely we we might have written an article or two about it. If not, hit me up and see, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, the second thing that you can do is once you're on the website, uh, subscribe to our newsletter, and that way you get updates whenever a new article comes out. So if you like our articles, subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our channel. And uh, if there's any questions, comments, or if there's something that you'd like to see in an upcoming video, hit me up in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.